Uh, the Ed Till Show live Monday morning, September 8th. Uh, this is the week of September 11th, by the way. That's why you've been inundated with stuff. But that's national. What we do best on Starcom Radio Network and our flagship on the line with us right now, Bob Williams, the host of Upfront and Outspoken is take a hard, unbiased look at the news that's most important to people who listen. Ordinary folks who listen. That's the news that makes KKRP special, Starcom Radio special, 1610 Callington, Oklahoma. Bob Williams is on the line. Uh, got this report overnight. I'm going to let him take it from there. Uh, Bob, once again, for those who are just joining the show now and, and have heard you in the middle of this explanation, what exactly is the public health threat as you understand it? Well, according to the report that we received at about 3 o'clock this morning, and that, like I said uh, earlier, that was courtesy of our friends up at 4029 TV in Fayetteville, Arkansas. This particular virus, uh, a virus, respiratory virus, is called EVD-68. Now, this is nothing to play around with. It's not like your standard flu. This this thing eh, has complications that go beyond belief, and there's there's a lot to this whole story. Number one, uh, the the virus affects can affect infants, children, middle-aged adults, senior citizens and the elderly if you have some some type of respiratory ailment to begin with. So this particular virus goes across the board. It, it. The, and the, the sad thing about this, it will act like the flu. However, there is no vaccination available. So you cannot simply go out to your local store, dime store or your local pharmacy and buy, buy one of those uh, flu remedies. This thing is uh, of such a nature that that's not going to help you, not going to help you at all. In fact, the report that uh, 49, uh, 4029 uh, aired was about a child who was, I believe, 13 years old who contracted this particular a respiratory ailment. The parents, knowing the child has asthma, didn't think uh, too much about it. And that's the sad thing, which I'll get into later. And literally, this 13-year-old turned blue before they got him to the hospital and realized that this child was infected with EVD-68. Now, I talked to uh, Leslie uh, Co uh, Covey, I believe her name is, C-O-V-E-Y. I want to make sure I uh, spell her name correctly. It's Leslie C-O-V-E-Y. She is in charge of the uh, local health department for Adair, LaFleur, Sequoia, and Haskell counties. Now, these are all counties surrounding the KKRP studios here in Kellington, Oklahoma. And she informed me that she really has n no information available, but what she did relay to us is what she was told as of Friday, and that is you can go to the hospital with these flu-like conditions, and they will take what is called a rabbit test. It's a, it's a swab on the inside of your mouth. Now, if you have the standard flu, it'll pop up in a matter of a couple of minutes. Now, that rabbit test with with EVD-68 is going to be inconclusive. So they're going to have to send this to the CDC for tests, for further tests. Now, that could take anywhere from 6 to 10 days for the hospital to get those results. And this is where this is where it really, right. really, really gets scary. Let me, uh, that let, me, let me just identify, again, for those who are joining us, what you're listening to. Uh, Bob Williams, host of Upfront and Outspoken, once again, I mean, not to get off on a tangent, this is another major story affecting people from Colorado to Georgia. The virus is called the EVD-68. Human, and here's the terminology, it's a human, <clears throat> excuse me, enterovirus. That's the word. It's a human enterovirus, and then they number it 68 because they haven't seen it before. Symptoms include, as Bob has been describing, and is affecting the area surrounding KKRP in Callington and the counties that we'll list again. I think I got them. Adair, 
Lafleur. Let me see if I got the uh, the uh, those counties. You want to hit them again? Right. It's Adair, Lafleur, Sequoia, and Haskell counties. Thank you. All right. So here's the symptoms as you've been describing, and again, asthma patients right away are at greater risk. The strain of the virus thought to be linked to the same strain. It, see, it's very similar to the common cold. It's got <clears throat> some structure inside of it. It is part of the common cold, but it's an off- a mutation. Remember that old word? It's a mutation of the cold virus. All right, so your symptoms are common cold. Your asthma patients are especially at risk. All right, pick it up from there. The counties that are affected and um, how many people does that take in? What's your guesstimate for the reach in in the area that you're describing? Well, currently, according to the uh, to Leslie, uh, right now there are no reported cases uh, of this particular virus here in the four counties I had mentioned. Again, I'll mention them: there Adair, Lafleur, Sequoia, and Haskell counties. Currently, there is no reported uh, outbreaks of that in this area. I've been in contact with the local hospitals. However, every one of them has basically dummied up. Uh, and in fact, uh, the hospital in Sequoia County immediately referred me to the Department of Health. And, you know, like you said, you know, this can start out as a cold, but it's going to quickly uh, develop into flu-like symptoms, but this is not, and I repeat, this is not your normal flu, and normal flu remedies yeah. will not work. Well, you cannot it's a go good to point. the hospital yeah. and get a flu shot and expect this thing to go away. There is no known vaccination available for this. And now it gets to the scary point, and this is what really bothered me and troubled me about this whole thing. School districts would be the very first ones to notice any potential of a flu like uh, such as this breakout. And how they do is that is if at least forty percent of a school population has flu like symptoms, they immediately notify the health department. The health department in turn has to notify the CDC. The CDC comes in, but the school districts know long before the health department does or the CDC does because they keep accurate records because kids will come to school with the sniffles. The parents don't have time to take the kid to the nearby doctor or can't wait for the doctor appointments. So these kids are going to be going to school with these symptoms. And mind you, this particular virus is transmitted by the air. So if you come in contact with somebody and you breathe what they've got, you're going to get it. You know, that's how contagious this yeah. thing actually is, according to Leslie. Right. And right. it surprised me that a school district would know faster than a hospital or the uh, health department itself, because as Leslie said, mm-hmm. the doctor's offices and hospitals are so backed up and understand that half the time, these right. reports take so much time to get onto the CDC. Right. But she did say that everyone should should take you know extra care with their hygiene. You know, when you you go somewhere, wash your hands, do whatever it takes. Personal hygiene is of the utmost importance. Yeah, to you know what? It's a good. That's a getting this. That is a really good uh, lesson today and reminder for the season. Ninety-nine percent. I mean, I'm being you know facetious. Uh, the vast majority of airborne transmission comes from hand washing, door handles, all that stuff. It doesn't live long, you know, depending on which it is. But man, if you get that thing twenty seconds after somebody else grabbed it, and then that you touch your face, you're done. 